Hello everyone, today I'm showing you this device right here. This of course is a Sega Genesis Flash Kit. It allows you to put any game that you want on a cart and play it right on your Sega Genesis. Of course, there's a lot of things we gotta do before we get this thing working and I'm gonna get right on to the next camera to show you what this device looks like, what it came with, and then we'll go on to installing the drivers and of course, putting your game on a cart. So let's get to the next camera and I will show you what this device looks like. Alright, so I've basically shown you what it looks like from the other camera, but it's better to get a little bit of an up close to see what it looks like. So here it is right here. You got all those wonderful chips that do the work to do what it needs to do to get that game on the cart. But the most specific thing we're looking at right here, of course, is the USB. This, of course, will um, connect to your computer, allowing you to put the game on your cart. Of course, there is a button right here. Um, they had told me that it is for flashing the game. Uh, I never had to use the button. Nobody has to use that button. And I suggest not using it anyways, because as you can see under the plastic there, there is a little bit of, uh, I don't know, a uh, wet mark of some sort. I hope it's not like some sort of acid leak. So if you get one of these, do not press the button when it's plugged in, or you may run into a problem. Of course, uh, the other cool part, of course, is the cart right here. This is, uh, well, the cart input. Basically, you just put the cart in there like this. Let's see if I can get that in there. And there you go, the cart is in. Now remember to have the cart facing, the chips facing towards the USB. If you have it backwards, it may not work properly, you may damage the machine, you may also damage the cart itself. So this is what the flash kit looks like, this is what it looks like when it has a cart in it, and yeah, and then you can do all your fancy work. Now of course we know that uh, Crix uh, is the official one, this is not by Crix. This is by KY Retro Game Store. Um, basically, this is their own product, and this is what I got. It also came with this cart as well. There is one supposed issue with this device. Apparently, it does not save SRAM to the cart or back it up. As far as I know, you, you can't put uh, SRAM on the cart. You may, may be able to do backup but I'm not really 100% sure about that. It says it on their website that uh, that feature is not possible on this, on this machine. So yeah, try backing it up, but I know that uh, you can't put a, an SRAM on the cart. All right, so here's the USB cable right here. Nothing special about that. This, of course, just allows you to connect it to the computer to do the work that you need to do. All right, so let's get on to the next step on installing this device on the computer. All right, so next we want to actually plug in this device and get on to installing the drivers to make it work. All right, so we'll connect it by USB, when I'm, which I'm doing right now. As soon as you plug it in, you'll see a few lights blink. You may also see confirmation at the bottom right of the screen that it's getting drivers to install. Of course, that doesn't work because we need to get the drivers ourselves. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to this website right here. I will include a link to the download below, but uh, what you're gonna need to get is the virtual COM port drivers. There is the D2XX drivers, and I'm not really sure how those work, but to me, they may work the same considering it's the same version number, and if I'm correct, it is the same download. Of course, you have the Linux driver, so those of you who are using Linux, you'll be able to install this under Ubuntu 11.10 and maybe other distros that would use this driver. Of course, we're gonna be using the Windows version, so if you're using a 32-bit operating system, make sure to ins uh, download the 32-bit version, as you can see on the screen here. Now, of course, um, I'm using a 64-bit uh, system, so if you are using a 64-bit system as well, 
make sure to download that. So just give a nice click to the 2.12 to, uh, sorry, 0.28 right there on the screen and the download should begin. All right, so once that's downloaded, you're gonna wanna double click on the, of course, the file that you downloaded. And as you can see, it's a wonderful executable. Now what I did, of course, is make a specific folder called FlashKit Genesis Driver. That's where all the driver uh, files should be so that when you install the driver, it's easy. So all you wanna do is drag over with the mouse and just drag it right to the FlashKit Genesis Driver. Of course, this is this problem that you're seeing here is because I have the files already included. So I'm just going to click replace the files in the destination. From there, the driver file should be in that folder, as you can see right here. But of course, we're not going to need anything from that folder. We're not going to click on anything is what I mean. Next, we're going to want to go to Device Manager to install the drivers. So next thing you're going to want to do is right click on the Windows button. Go to Device Manager, and it's now prompt up on the screen. Now we're going to want to find the device in the Device Manager. It should be under Other Devices as FT24, or sorry, yeah, 245R, USB FIFO. And all you're going to want to do is right click on that, Update Driver, Browse My Computer for Drivers. Now, of course, for me, it's automatically on the screen, but for you, you're going to want to click the Browse button, click Desktop, and of course, all these folders will be right there. And as I had said, I put it in the FlashKit Genesis driver folder. So we're just going to click OK there. Make sure to click Include Subfolders or it just won't install. So we're going to click Next here. And there we go. The USB serial converter has been installed. And there we go. Of course, there's one other thing we're going to have to install here. That is the USB serial port. It's going to mimic that you're using a COM port to use this device. And we don't have a COM port on the computer, but again, it's mimic of a USB to use a COM port. All right, so we're just going to right click on USB serial port, update driver again, and browse my computer. Of course, it should be up there already that um, the folder that you're using the drivers from, but if not, do the same steps as I had said in the last, um, or, or what I did to install the driver for the device itself. So we just click Next, and now the serial port has been installed, and right now you should be able to use the device with the software. So now I'm going to show you where to get that software and how to use the software for getting a game on your card. So let's get to that next step. All right, so on their website, it shows you the link where you can download it from. Um, you can't just copy the link because it's just an image. So I have a readme file that is downloaded or given to you when you download the software. But I'm going to include the link in the description below so you can just click along and download the file. So for me, I'm just going to copy this link here and close this window. Don't need to save. Go to Edge, and then we're going to right click in the address bar. And there we go. So it's downloading the Flash Kit software for me. And again, um, you're just going to want to open up that uh, executable that you just downloaded and drag over the files. And again, I have the specific folder for it. So I just called it FlashKit Genesis, and I drop and drag those files right into the FlashKit Genesis. Again, I've got the replace the files because I already have the files, and there we go. And uh, yes, so yes, now you have the FlashKit MD manual on how to use the device ETC, but I'm going to show you right from here on how to use it. Now, of course, as I had said, they give you a cartridge. And usually when you get these cartridges, it already includes a game. And I'm pretty sure you want to use it for the specific game you either made or a game you had purchased on Steam. And that's what I used it for. All right. So what you're going to want to do is obviously put it in your flash kit, as I had showed you in the beginning of the video, um, what this device does and how to put it in the 
flash kit. You're just going to want to do it that way. And now it's in the flash kit. All right, so now that we have the cart in the flash kit, we're going to just want to open up the software. From there, like I had said, you're going to want to find out what's on the cart that uh, they had given you because usually um, they put a game on there, I think, for uh, testing purposes. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. You get some sort of uh, homebrew game. I got uh, Adventurous Boy, which is a Fantasy Zone uh, clone, so I backed that up and put it on my computer. So for you, you're just going to want to press the cart info button here. And as you can see, I have Tanglewood on there. Now, after I backed up the Adventurous Boy game, I put Tanglewood on there. So for you, before you put a game on there, you're going to want to back up that ROM that they give, gave you by clicking the Read ROM. Now, of course, um, as you can see here, you can save the ROM to the specific folder. Um, you can also rename it to whatever you want. Of course, I don't want all this gibberish at the bottom. So I'm just going to do that and save it as Tanglewood R, which is probably registered trademark, and then click the Save button. From there, you will see the green bar at the bottom showing you that it's doing its work. And once that is done, the game should be right in the Genesis Flash Kit folder. As you can see right here, the game is now in that folder. Now, of course, if you want to put a game on your cart, I'm going to use the exact ROM that I just ripped from the cart by pressing Write ROM. So from there, we're going to use that, that exact ROM that I ripped. You can use whatever ROM you want to uh, use. I'm just using this as an example on how to get this to work. So we double click on that. Now it's going to flash erase the game that is on there and put the game that you want on the cart. So again, we're going to go through the flash erase, and it's going to show you how. All right, so now this is where the flash write comes into progress, and now it's going to put the ROM on the cart for you. All right, so now it's on flash verify. That's just to verify that the write pro progress has worked. So yeah, this is it's just going to take a little bit of time. It doesn't take too long. And then you'll have your game ready to go for your Sega Genesis. And I will show you exactly what that looks like. Alright, so now the Flash Verify has um, progressed and has completed successfully. Again, we're going to press the card info just to make sure that it has went onto the cartridge. And as you can see, Tanglewood is on there. And the ROM size is 4 megs and the RAM size is 0. Now... Um, usually if you have a save file or save the game, it may have a bigger size. The reason why it's zero bytes here is because the game doesn't have a save feature. That's right. You have to use codes. Whatever. It does what it needs to do. And uh, as I had mentioned earlier, um, it might be able to read the RAM if there is a certain game that you have um, saves for, but you cannot write the RAM. So I don't know if you can back up the RAM or write the RAM, but... And will, I believe it'll write, uh, read. Let's see what happens here. I'm just going to do the read and press save. Okay, yeah, RAM is not detected. Um, that could be because the game doesn't contain a save or it's just not, it just doesn't work with this device as it would with the Crix model. All right, so let's get on to putting this into the Sega Genesis and seeing if the flash kit actually worked. Let's get to that next. All right, so this next step here, grab the cart that you had put the game on from your flash kit and put in your Sega Genesis. Now, of course, uh, you can't really see the, the cart right here, and uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way anyways. What I would recommend is you get a nice, nice little Genesis uh, game shell from Dragon Box, and that's where I grabbed mine because... Uh, I bought a game from them sometime last year, and uh, I had a cart, and they didn't include the ROM. Long story short, they did help me, and I thank them dearly. They gave me the game, and I had an extra cartridge, so that's what I wanted to use this for was Tanglewood, and now I have it in a cart shell. So, let's get on to the next step anyways. Yeah, so I have the cart right in the Sega Genesis. Just press the power button on your, your Genesis, and let's see if it worked.
Of course, you can see the produced by or under license from Sega Enterprises. No, this game is not at all licensed by Sega. This game is created by Big Evil Corp, ETC, and you can see that the game is running perfectly fine on the Sega Genesis. This is Tanglewood right here. So there you go. That is how you get a game on a cartridge to play on your Sega Genesis. The good old-fashioned retro way of playing games on the Sega Genesis. All right, so that is how you get a game on a cartridge for the Sega Genesis. Now, I believe this may also work with the official Sega Genesis cart. Of course, I wouldn't totally recommend it unless you get, have a game in your collection that you don't like. But again, I wouldn't totally recommend it because a lot of people don't like when you, you know, get rid of a game on an official cart and, uh, you know, it just kind of loses the value of what was originally contained on it. But anyways, yes, that's how you get a game on a Sega Genesis cart. If you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Also, you know, leave me a subscription. And I hope to have a video again available for you in the future, as I always say. Bye for now.